it's what we've been waiting for, fingerprints. Now I'm gonna go into the history of fingerprints in a separate episode, but we did cover it briefly in episode one, so you can go and find some history back there. Let's look into the in-depth of classification. Now everyone knows fingerprints are unique and they won't change throughout your lifetime, but to be able to compare them, we need to have something to focus on, and that's friction ridges. Now, experts have found that most of our fingerprints contain very similar ridges in a whole different array, making them unique. Now, the three most common are the loop, the whirl, and the arch. Uh, the loop looks like a kind of roller coaster. The whirl is circles within circles, and the arch is, well, an arch. It's pretty straightforward. Now, there are patterns within these patterns as well. Loops have two patterns, the ulnar and the radial. Now, loops make up 70% of all prints. Whirls have four types, and those are the plain whirl, the central, double loop whirl, and the accidental whirl. Now, these account for about 25% of fingerprints. And finally, there are two types of arch patterns, plain arch, and tented art, and these count for about 5% of all fingerprints. But where do you start if you want to count loops and compare? Now that would be the delta point. It's named after the Greek letter and gives a starting point so that any analyst can pick up a print and hopefully draw the same conclusions. There are also characteristics within the print itself to help identify the unique pattern. These include ridge ending, bifurcation, that's ridge splits, short independent ridge, lake ridge splits, crossover, spur, and a whole bunch more. Of course, there are natural identifiers like burn marks and scars from wounds, and these are all taken into account. But unless you plan on really damaging your body, an accidental slice with an avocado knife won't change your patterns. Now, in the movies, we see people burn their prints off with acid, but a print is only one form of identity, so don't do it. Remarkably, there are some people born with no prints at all. The finger pads of people with adramatogophilia, probably not how you pronounce it, are entirely flat. Dr. Peter Eaton, an expert from the University of Basel, concluded that these people were related and they had a mutation of a DNA strand that led to the lack of prints. They're not still sure exactly why, but they are looking into it. It is very fascinating, but they would be easy to spot at a crime scene though if there was zero prints, but print-shaped fingerprints. Anyway, back to the crime scene prints. Now in England, you only need 16 unique identifiers to match an individual to a print, and every country has its own rules. So back in the day, before automated fingerprint identification systems, or IDENT1 here in the UK, it was that's happened in the 80s, crime scene examiners had to cross match by hand and usually a suspect's print looks very different to a crime scene print. One removed with powder, in hydrant or superglue, to be discussed later, and the other done with ink pad, a piece of paper and an officer that has been on a double shift. Not the dream. Now in a nutshell, the examiner looks at the pattern type of the print, observes the line of flow, either right or left, looks for obvious points of identification, finds if characteristics are in the same relative position, and ensures that fingerprints are in sequential order by checking the rolled impression to the plane impressions. Now, flat or plane impressions give a truer reading of how ridges appear, which is why live scanners are much clearer and thankfully are used everywhere now. If you want to know more about live scanners, then head to the documentary in the link below. It'll give you an insight into the Metropolitan Police's biometric team. Now, I don't want is great. It enables forces to search and compare fingerprints and crime scene marks in a single database, providing a unified collection of finger and palm prints managed by England, Wales and Scotland. Now, these lectures are ongoing, so don't think that's the end of our fingerprint chat. We still have to discuss methods of detecting prints, preserving them, and how to rehydrate mummified fingers and get prints off a burn victim. But that's all for another episode. Subscribe and keep coming back for the latest.